I assume everybody is familiar with the discovery 18 years ago when this German couple were traveling along the main mountain ridge. Nobody really realized that this was a Neolithic party, so it took some time that this was recognized, but then we had the unique opportunity, an excellent preserved Neolithic body with all his artifacts to investigate. He had completely arms with him, bow and arrows in his quiver. Two of them were able to be shot, all the others are unfinished. The bow was also unfinished, never in use. You can see cutting marks all over the bow body, parallel running to three rings, made in a very simple, traditional way. And you can see no imprints of a sinew or notches at the end of the bow. And there is even no grip made in this bow, and this tells us completely unfinished thing and never used. The important thing is the length of the arrows, which is round about 85 centimeters. We can say the ideal measure of an arrow for the NCI's man is 75 centimeters. So that what he had in his quiver were arrows which had an overlength. Then he had also shoes with him. They were also amazing because the shoes were built up with a binding construction of uh, lime bark and the shoes were stuffed with grasses and then we had a beer skin sole and then we had a deer skin uh, shoe. But the thing is that what we have here are all grasses which grow near the timberline and this was collected by the Iceman before he went up to the TCO. Then he also carried a birch bark vessel and inside this birch bark vessel there were several Norway maple leaves and in these maple leaves we had charcoal and this charcoal had the function of cold ember. So he took this charcoal when he enlightened the fire, put it again to the fire so that he had a quick starting glow. When they left the fireplace, some charcoal, and according to this, you get these mixtures in these charcoal. Then he also had a grass cape. This grass cape was built up uh, by a specific grass, Brachybodium pinatum, which grows also at the timberline in the area. According to ethno-archaeological uh, investigations, we know precisely that uh, primitive tribes usually collect all the material which they use in their everyday life in the immediate surroundings. And according to this, we can make a sort of catchment analysis in this case where can I collect all these species within half a day or even one day north and south of the Alps. So this is also confirmed by bryological analysis. And there is one moss within this Necora complanata. And this Necora complanata, as you can see, grows only south of the main Alpine ridge. And this gives us additionally the hint that the Iceman came from the south. So there were severe questions about was he really coming from the south, did he come from the north, because there were investigations on the height of the Iceman and the results from the height suggested he was coming from the, south, from the north. Therefore it was quite interesting for us to make investigations on the body and particularly on the intestines. So, there were several surgery interventions. What you can see here is a cross section through uh, the lower part of the thorax, of the breast. You can see in central the spine, above 
a thin layer which corresponds to uh, the bowl and then you have the bigger one which corresponds to the stomach, the gastric. And out of these, we collected them in gestum, so the remains of the food stuff in his intestines. And you can see these tiny little crumbles, uh, which is completely desiccated food remains. So we have collected completely five different sites from the end of the small ball, the circum, and then from the transverse colon and in the middle part. And then what we have in, at the end of the colon at the sigmoid part, and then the last one comes from the rectum. So if we look a little bit closer on these macro remains, you can see we have here macro remains from einkorn. We also found stone cells, but we can't tell the species, and at least we found a lot of pollen. So what we found else is a lot of charcoal, uh, charcoal from uh, the pine larix type in this case. So this tells us that the food was prepared on open fire. And then we also have an, a, a lot of eggs of the human whipworm, Trichuris trichura. Uh, he had a severe infection of these worms. And what we else have are muscle fibers. And so these muscle fibers indicate us all that he had cons consumed meat. There are significant differences in between the last meal coming from the small bowel and the other meals which he had before. So there were also DNA analysis on these material and Rollo and his team found out that the last meal consisted of red deer and the other one from the end of the colon consisted of ibex meat. But to sum up, uh, what we can say for the moment is that the Iceman had an intentional ingestion of cereal, primitive wheat called einkorn, then bracken, kinopods, loose food family, and rhodia ibex meat. Additionally, we also have a lot of spores from bracken. The fascinating was that we know and there were different meats in different localities of his intestine. And according to this, we know that we have at least two parts of meals. But if we know now the background column in this case, we can make by numerical comparison a check how the pollen flora from one sample is similar to the pollen flora from the next. And according to this, we can see that the pollen flora from the last meal of the small bowel corresponds very closely with the pollen flora from the meal of the first part of the transverse colon. So according to this, we can say they belong more or less to one mean. And we have the same at the end of the intestinal tract. But there is one precise distinct in between in the transverse colon. This is colon number two, which is completely different from all these two we had. So at least we can say that the ice has consumed three different means which are reflected in his intestinal tract and this all reflects a well-balanced diet of meat, cereals and vegetables. So the main question was where did he come from? Where was his origin? Where was his domicile located? And the second one is what was he doing there? So, concerned with the second question is, what was his profession? And also what we need to know something about 
what was he doing up there, the short time movements the Iceman made before he died. And this has severe implications on the scene which was expressed up to now. Now that we know that we are in spring, we have up there several meters of snow, so we can say that the Iceman had been hours before he died in the valley bottoms south of the main alpine ridge, and this confirms that he was coming from the south. There were additional investigations made on the origin of the Iceman, dealing with oxygen and strontium isotopes on the animal of his teeth. So you have different isotopes on oxygen and strontium in the environment and we consume them. And these isotope relationship is archived in our bones and teeth. And if we measure these then, thousands of years afterwards, we can tell something where this person lived. Müller and his colleagues have made these investigations and their results have been that the Iceman grew up as a boy in the area near Bressanone and then as an adult migrated into the Val Vinosta where he later died. And so according to this we compare now the ingester samples with this reference data set. And this tells us that around about 33 hours, starting with the rectum sample, he was in the Timberline area, around about 2,300-2,500 meters in the area of the Thiessen Valley, Schnals Valley and so on. Then, around about 9 to 12 hours before he died, he was in the valley bottom and then he went up again and had his last meal in the helium sample again at the timberline in between two to five hours before he died. So these are now quite precisely short time movements what we are having now and these short time movements lend new weight to the disaster theory of Ötzi's death Spindler presented two years after the discovery. So his hypothesis was that the Iceman returned in autumn from the high alpine pastures to his native village and there he came into a conflict that severe that he had to flee from the community up to the high grounds which were familiar to him and there he died of hypothermia at the end. Well, there are a lot of these parts in this hypothesis which are obsolete up to now. We've already heard it was not autumn, it was spring and we also know that the cause of death is not hypothermia. He was killed. He was killed by a shot with an arrow in his left shoulder. And you see precisely the arrow on the left picture and on the right hand you can see it corresponding. Above it you can see the arteria axillaris which was hurt and this caused a rapid bleeding to death so he was killed within minutes. Now going back to the social context, who was the Iceman? There are several hypotheses and all of these hypotheses are completely unsatisfying. Some of them say he was a hunter, a warrior or an outlaw, he was a shaman, he was a miner or ore prospector, but 
the most accepted assumption for the moment is that he was a shepherd. There are several pros for being a shepherd. One is the grass cape. And the grass cape is the traditional costume of shepherds of the Balkan Peninsula until the 19th century. And all the analysis in the vicinity of the discovery site reveal that there were pasture activities. So according to this, the idea brought up the Iceman being a shepherd is also very closely related because the discovery spot is located on the traditional transhumans route used since the Middle Ages from the Schnalz Valley to the Alpine pastures north of the main Alpine ridge where they cross even the Niederjoch glacier as you can see. So we would like to answer this question by analyzing where have these animals grazed. And this we can do again by a modern analog approach. On the one hand, to compare the subfossil dung pollen with modern pollen samples. And this strongly suggests that what we are having here is that this is coming from animals which browsed in the alpine zone. And that these belong mainly to game and not to livestock. The Neolithic high alpine pasture is still an open question and it really caused severe doubts on the hypothesis that the Iceman has been a shepherd. So, coming to the end, and to sum up, we can say that archaeobotany contributes a lot to the understanding of this discovery. It contributes substantially to the origin from the south, that he has consumed an omnivorous diet. We have a precise demise in spring, so he was there up several months earlier than the autumn, where we had a lot of snow up there, which has a severe impact in the understanding of what happened up there. And we know the short time movements before his death, well, about the last two days, we know that he came down from high alpine situation to low valley bottoms and then up again. And we learn also several things about the social context because the hypothesis that he was a shepherd is really severely doubted for that time. So anyhow, to sum up, we know several things, but there is a lot still open in questions to be answered, and thus this finding still reveals a lot of enigma. Thank you.